Hey you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about autofocus with your EM1 Mark II. So the camera is one of the most advanced, most capable, and yet most configurable cameras I've ever run across. And so there's a lot to know in terms of setting up your autofocus for peak performance. And so today I want to talk about my settings in terms of shooting people with your EM1 Mark II. And so if you shoot birds in flight or even sports, I know your parameters and things you're trying to achieve are a little bit different than what I do. But if you shoot people, events, portraits, these might be some helpful settings just to kind of think about configuring your EM1 Mark II for best performance. Okay, so the first thing is, uh, I'm gonna get the polarizing bits out of the way here up front, is that uh, I am a back button focus guy. And what that means is that I am separating the shutter from doing two jobs down to just one. My shutter only fires the camera. My AEAF lock button on the back of the camera does the autofocusing for me. I really like that because um, I don't like having to maintain pressure on the switch or, worried, or worrying about if I press the shutter button too lightly that it's gonna refocus before it takes a photo. I've been doing it for years. If you've never tried it before, I would really suggest you try it. Although a lot of photographers hate it and a lot of photographers love it. Um, over the years, I've definitely converted a bunch of people to it who would never go back now. So <laughs> just my advice, uh, if it's working for you the other way, then totally stick with it. Okay, so to do that though, just for those of you who may be coming into this new, um, if you just go into the A1 menu, I'm in B, here we go. A1, you can configure what the AEAF lock button does in this setting. So uh, my settings are S3, C4, M1. And so if I go right and go into the SAF settings, I use mode three, which means my AEAF lock button does single autofocus. Backing out, I go to CAF in the same thing, only in CAF it's mode four. So you just go down to mode four and that's the AF start button. So simple to set up, uh, works great for me. If you have an EM5 Mark II or you have an, e, an uh, EM10 Mark III, um, those two cameras do not have a really great button that you can actually configure for autofocus. I mean, you can do it, but it's, it's not in a great location for me. So in those cameras, I really prefer to use the trigger button. Uh, but for my main wedding body, I really love the fact that the button that they've given us is a nice, big, easy to reach button. So, word to the wise on that. Okay, so the second thing I've done is that I like to move between single autofocus and continuous autofocus quickly and easily depending on what I'm shooting. And the best way that I've learned to do that on the EM1 Mark II is by configuring the two lever settings here, lever, this lever here, mode one and mode two. Mode one for me is single autofocus and mode two is continuous autofocus. So if I wanna go to continuous, I just flip the switch and you can see the camera instantaneously is in continuous autofocus. Now, if you're a back button focus person and you work in moderate to good light most of the time, you could actually leave your camera in continuous autofocus and to stop the camera from autofocusing, you just don't press the button. But for me, I'll tell you up front that when I work in really dim environments like inside a church or at night, I find that when I get a lock from single autofocus, it's a lot more trustworthy than when I get a lock from continuous autofocus if the subject isn't moving, okay? It's gotta be um, something that's stopped. If you have uh, someone who's just standing up there doing their vows or whatever in a church and they're not moving and you have continuous autofocus on, I tend to think that the continuous autofocus gets annoyed by the fact that nothing's moving in the frame and so it continues to hunt a little bit wondering where's the moving thing, right? <laughs> I find that in those scenarios that if I choose single autofocus that I get a really accurate lock on the person, I don't have to worry about it. As soon as they start to move, let's say that you know it's after the kiss and they're walking back up the aisle, as soon as they're coming at me, it's definitely continuous autofocus. So, and if I'm at a reception and people are dancing, let's say it's a first dance, if there's a good amount of light, if it's a if it's a um, moderately great, you know, well lit uh, dance floor, then I find continuous autofocus works great. If it's super dim or something like that, and I'm kind of worried that the camera's gonna be hunting, then I tend to use single autofocus, uh, just because it'll give me a better lock on something that's, you know, not that far away from me. So, um, continuous autofocus is on mode two. So, to set that up, it's really easy. Um, you would just go into, here we go, uh, it's down to the B, uh, gear B 
and then you go down to FN lever settings and you set that to mode 2 and so that reads changes AF mode so that just means that um, it'll go between the two of them as you hit the switch now there's one important note here and that is that the mode 2 does not automatically mean that you're in continuous autofocus it means that that mode is sticky to wherever you left it so if you're in mode 1 and you're in SAF okay and then you go to mode 2 hit the menu again here I'm sorry hit the super control panel it's in CAF now if I change this to single AF I go back to mode 1 I'll be in SAF if I go back to mode 2 guess what I'm still in single AF so it's stuck wherever I left it so make sure that when you set this up that you go to mode 2 go ahead and set that into continuous autofocus and then as long as you don't change it it will always be there now I also have one other hugely important caveat with this um, and that is that when you go between single autofocus and continuous autofocus the other thing that is registered at that moment when you move between the two is where your autofocus point is on the screen so if you're in continuous autofocus and it's way over here on the right and then you go to single and you have it way over here on the left if you go between the two it's going to bounce between the two autofocus points and it won't remember where you were so if you do this a lot it might be a really beneficial thing to learn to make sure that every time you leave continuous autofocus for example if that's your less used one to go ahead and move it to the middle so that way you're prepared and it's sort of reset for you so it's sticky the autofocus point is sticky between the two modes just remember that okay so um, sensitivity okay so in the menu there is a setting up under A1 or A2 here called C it's an A1 it's in it's called CAF sensitivity and what this does is it um, is a gauge for how quickly the continuous autofocus is recalculating position so if you are looking at something that's moving really quickly you probably want a plus setting if you're something that's moving a little bit more slowly you probably want a little bit slower setting um, it's definitely worth playing with um, and for me for everything that people do short of sprinting I find that the minus one setting works so your mileage may vary definitely check it out but it's right there under CAF sensitivity um, okay so moving down just two items here we're getting to all of the different configurable settings for the size of the autofocus point and if we head over here to the right you can actually turn on and off which of the autofocus settings in the camera you want to be available to you um, via the super control panel or, or any of the other settings um, and I don't like any of the other <laughs> autofocus point groupings except for two I like the regular one which is this one rectangle at a time and the small autofocus points which are the little squares okay so I have actually turned off all of the different autofocus points that way when I am let's say going into the super control and I go to my focus point settings if I roll one of these dials I can only go between small and large small and large and I cannot go to diamond or nine or the whole grid it just keeps me from making mistakes so if those are modes that you use leave them on if they're modes that you really don't want to have available to you you can at least turn them off so that they're not there all the time if you don't want to okay so that just brings me to one more point and that is just anecdotal evidence of what I'm or like stories about what I'm doing actually in the field um, when I'm using single autofocus points and I'm taking pictures um, of people I prefer the small autofocus points the squares um, those autofocus points just make sure that the accuracy of the autofocus point is as high as humanly possible um, what it really means is that um, you know those larger autofocus points let's say that that larger autofocus point covers half of somebody's face you know the top half of somebody's face that leaves a little open to interpretation for the camera to find the nearest thing and focus on it if you are working with shallow depth of field or whatnot or you have any 
uh, wiggle room there as to what's going to be in focus and what's not going to be in focus, um, then sometimes you're going to get inconsistent results. If you move to the small out of focus points, I really believe that 99.9% .9 of the time, that focus point is small enough that you can place it right on the eye and really get um, hyper accurate autofocus. So if possible with anything that's stationary, I like the very smallest autofocus points. Now, if I'm working within in a situation where I have a little bit of depth of field, like let's say I'm shooting dancing or um, you know, just generalized people walking, talking, that kind of thing, then the rectangle, the single autofocus point rectangle is fine because I'm really counting on the fact that if I focus on her nose, I've got enough depth of field that her eye is going to be perfectly sharp. Um, but <clears throat> all things being equal, I would still prefer the smallest one. Also, I will tell you that if you're working in the dark and you're just kind of like, okay, I really need the camera to lock onto something easily and quickly, the slightly larger autofocus point gives the camera more to work with. So when I'm shooting in the dark, let's say dancing at night, I tend to use the rectangle autofocus point. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. A couple other, um, just little, um, housekeeping items here. There's one setting that could be really uh, <laughs> temperamental for you, and that is that the camera, when you hit the FN1 button up here, and FN1 is um, pre-configured to bring you back to your center autofocus point. So if you're working and you're like, you got your autofocus point somewhere else on the screen, and then you're like, I want it to be the middle, you should be able to hit your FN1 button and then just go straight back to the middle. Um, but what you can, what might happen <laughs> if you set it up the wrong way is that you could create a situation where um, it actually is doing more than that. And so if I move here to A2, where it says, um, has the five autofocus points and it says set home, if you move into that, into those settings, you can actually configure it to change the autofocus mode when you hit the home button. So instead of being like, a, just move my focus point to the middle, it's more like hit that button and default all of my autofocus settings to be factory defaults. So I don't prefer that. I don't want switching modes on me without me thinking or knowing about it. So I've definitely turned that off. So you can configure it if you like it, but that's where that is. And um, then another one is just the AF illuminator. Um, that just the little orange light on the front of the camera that fires when it doesn't have enough light it thinks to get good focus. Um, I will tell you that um, if you turn that off, that there's a good chance that the camera is going to start hunting for focus <laughs> because it needs that light. If the camera thinks it needs it, it usually does. So for that reason, I leave it on. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about face priority. I think this is really interesting because um, uh, some of my um, settings for this have changed um, since the firmware update. So here's the deal with face priority. If you have an image where you have only one face, like what's happening to me right now on camera. Face Detect works awesome. Um, it's really very accurate, quick, wonderful to work with, and uh, you can even set it to focus on the eye. And all of that works great. As soon as you get two or three or four people in the frame, or if I were to switch to the side, that kind of thing, and for whatever reason the camera loses the Face Detect, then weird stuff starts happening because it actually defaults from the face that it's on to wherever the autofocus point was before you turn face priority on. So let's say I have the autofocus point down here, turn on face priority, everything's working great. I turn my head and then it doesn't know where my face is, it defaults back to here, okay? So that's a little, a little weird. Um, also, if there's multiple faces in the frame and I turn my face, it may jump to another person. So here's my advice. If you have a situation where you have only one subject, I think face priority is wonderful. If you're working with a fast prime and you want very accurate autofocus, then choose eye autofocus from face priority. If the person is moving or turning or uh, that kind of deal, then I think it's, it's kind of dicey. You may find it works great. You may find it doesn't work at all. Uh, and then um, if you are in continuous autofocus, and you turn on face priority uh, and you have a single person. I think that works pretty well for sports. Um, like let's say you have a runner and you just have the one runner in the frame. I, if it can pick up the face and it's in continuous autofocus now, I think it does a pretty great job of tracking that person running uh, across the frame. Um, and it's really nice because you don't have to uh, be as hyper vigilant about keeping your autofocus point on the person as they're running. Um, 
but if you all run into some some issues as you're working where it's jumping from one to the other that kind of thing then um, certainly it's not as bulletproof as just keeping your single autofocus point exactly where you want it and kind of doing it old school manual sort of way in a sense so just a word to the wise on that one um, and then just jumping to my notes on continuous autofocus um, you know uh, with lots of different genres of photography you have different size targets <laughs> and so I think that some of those other autofocus modes the diamond pattern and the nine autofocus points might work really well for um, larger um, targets or for situations where you need faster acquisition of autofocus uh, but not necessarily hyper accurate pinpoint placement of that autofocus point. Uh, one such scenario could be like shooting football for example. When I would shoot football, you know, we weren't shooting at 1.4 or even 2.8 most of the time. We were shooting at 4 or 5.6 and it wasn't so hyper important that you know, like I had the focus point right on somebody's eyeball, it was enough that it was on their helmet or on their numbers in order to get a, a sharp picture. And so in those cases, like maybe the nine out of focus points would work really well because it just gives the camera more things to lock onto. Um, but in my job now where I'm working with people who don't, are never necessarily <laughs> sprinting anywhere, um, having just, uh, you know, one autofocus point right on their face and sort of tracking with them as they're moving gives me, you know, 90 plus percent of accuracy in terms of continuous autofocus. So for that reason, when I'm in continuous autofocus, I use just the one regular size box. I don't use the little square um, boxes, the little smaller AF points, because I think that the camera is trying to precisely autofocus too much and so it leads to more jitter and more hunting and more missed pictures. I give the camera a little bit more chance to get the focus. I figure they're moving anyway, so the chance of like it having to lock onto an eyelash or whatever is, um, is a little bit too much to ask and, and a little bit unnecessary for anything that's moving. Like I'm okay with the fact that it's probably gonna be maybe on their face and not necessarily one part of their face. So that's my notes on continuous autofocus for what I'm doing. Now, anecdotally, um, just in terms of what I shoot on a personal level when I'm shooting my kids' sports and things, uh, I will tell you that uh, I think for everything that's kid related and you know that's not moving like so fast <laughs> um, that single autofocus point works best there too if I can keep the target on what I want in focus. So if my kid is if my kids are doing Taekwondo or they're doing track or they're doing baseball or football or whatever, um, being able to keep one autofocus point on their face tends to give me um, the best chance of having all sharp photos. If, um, like I said, if it was something where it was like an Olympic runner kind of situation where you're moving much faster, it may be that uh, increasing the number of focus points would work even better. So your mileage may vary, definitely test it out, but that's what's worked best, working best for me. Okay, um, okay, so, <laughs> you know, controversial point number two, um, all of the Olympus Pro lenses have a uh, clutch mechanism. And that is that the autofocus ring on the front of the lens moves forward and backward, and that will move you between, um, you know, uh, autofocus and manual focus. And it's a wonderful feature, and I think it's really cool. But when I'm working with two cameras in the field, um, I find that it's too easy for me to bump that and put my camera into manual focus. And then when I reach for my second camera, I don't know that it's in manual focus, and that causes me a problem. So if you're a two camera shooter kind of person, or you're just clumsy in the sense that you find you're knocking that setting a lot, um, definitely easy enough to turn it off, um, and I have. If I am uh, was working with just one camera 99% of the time, I probably wouldn't turn it off because it would be kind of useful to be able to move it into manual focus if for whatever reason I wanted to use focus peaking or focus magnification to check to make sure I'm getting super accurate focus. So to turn off the, the MF clutch, it's all located in that same menu area. Um, it's here under A3, and that's where I would just turn it to be inoperative. So MF clutch in A3. Okay, so um, that brings me to my last point here, and that is the LFN button on the lenses. The Pro lenses also have a button on the side of all of them that can be pre-programmed to do a whole host of different things, just like all the rest of the FN buttons on the camera. 
And um, I'll tell you what, I've been through all the different options and I haven't found anything that's super helpful for me, but I do wanna bring it up because there might be something in there that would be super useful for you or your mindset or your photography. So if you go into button function here in the B menu and then go down to LFN, you can go in and you can cycle through a whole host of options for what this uh, button can do. I currently have mine set to AF stop, which just means that um, if I hit that button, that auto autofocusing will cease. It's sort of like a lock situation, which I don't find to be uh, terribly useful, but also if I were to use it, it wouldn't cause me any issues. There are a bunch of options in here that if I set it, I feel like if I accidentally hit that button, it would flip the camera into doing something which would um, throw me out of taking a photo, which would be detrimental to what I'm doing. So uh, just keeping it simple, I just don't really use that button, but definitely wanna make you aware of it. So believe it or not, that was actually 10 different parameters that we've changed or modified for autofocus on the EM1 Mark II. Hopefully there's something in there that's useful to you. But I wanna talk about one other big category of things that um, is super important. Okay, and that is that the camera has two autofocus systems in it. One is based around touch, and the other is based around um, traditional sort of array of autofocus points in the camera, okay? And so what we're talking about here is moving the autofocus point around the screen. Um, and so in the traditional method, you see a grid of squares and you move the grid around. So if I'm taking photos and I go in here, I can move them around this grid, okay? And I can use the small autofocus points or the regular autofocus points, okay? These are all registered autofocus points within the camera. These are um, all gonna give you those phase detect and they're all gonna be contrast detects. And it's, I think personally, these are the most accurate um, autofocus points that the camera has. And they're the ones that I prefer to use most of the time, okay? But the camera also has a touch interface. And if I just start touching the screen, especially when it's away from my face, I can move the autofocus point quickly and easily anywhere I want in the frame and focus on it. So that's actually super useful too, okay? The problem comes between moving between the two systems while you're working, okay? You've really got to understand what series of buttons that you want to push in order to make sure that you're aware of what the camera's doing at all times. So if I'm in touch and I want to move to um, the regular autofocus system, I have to hit the OK button. If I hit the OK button, that moves me into the grid and then I can move the autofocus points around. Okay, and that works doubly for when you move it up to your face. So if you're moving here and it's out here, which is where I tend to use touch um, most of the time is away from my face. When I move it up to my face, I have to hit the OK button that moves from touch autofocus to regular autofocus, okay? Now I wish, and this is a note to Olympus here, <laughs> I wish that the same, that same functionality happened when you hit the FN1 button, the home button. I wish that that took you right back to regular autofocus, but it doesn't. You've got to hit the OK button first. So my method of working is if I'm using touch autofocus and I move it to my face, I hit OK kind of on the way up to my face or as soon as it gets to my face, I hit OK, okay? I have also turned off the touch AF pad in the camera. And what that means is that if you have touch AF pad on, when the camera's up to your face, you can use the screen to move the focus points around. The problem I found after a few months of using it is that it's really difficult to reach all the way across to the left hand side of the screen. I have huge hands, but with my face and nose and all over, all of <coughs> whatever in front of me, if I have the camera up to my face and I'm trying to move it all the way over to the left, I find it really hard to reach all the way over. I also wish that Olympus would give us an option where they can find the movement of the autofocus point all to like one quadrant of the screen. That way you could use a smaller area like you would uh, a mouse pad, for example, in relation to your, com your computer screen. Mouse pad is much smaller, computer screen is larger, just allows you to quickly move it around without having to go like all the way over the screen. Okay, so that's number one. So if you're in touch and you wanna get to a regular AF system, you hit okay. Now, if you're in the regular AF system, there's one other gotcha, and that is that um, normally, if you move the autofocus point, you take a photo, and then you wanna move back to home. You wanna reset to the middle, which is super useful if you're like moving quickly. You just hit the FN1 button, and boom, moves you right back to home, okay? That's awesome. But there's one kind of gotcha there. If you're in the process of moving the autofocus point around, you're like choosing one, you're like, ah, no, I don't wanna do that, back to middle. 
it doesn't work, okay? It, what you have to do is you have to hit the trigger first, then hit home. Okay, and so that's my other trick for moving out of focus points around is if your F if your home button your FN one button is not working, then you need to hit the trigger button first, then hit the home key and that'll move you back to the middle. And so learning to make those two operations sort of um, super mentally engaged or like easy for you to remember uh, and uh, just uh, um, almost forget about it because you're so used to doing it will make the autofocus system super fast to use. So. Again, these are all configurable stuff to your style. I definitely think that everybody needs to try out the different methods and see what works for them. Maybe for somebody else, moving focus points around on the screen, the touch AF pad works really great for them. Um, but for me, it was just causing more issues than it was helping. So I've turned it off and I just use it when it's away from my body. Um, I guess I should also mention just in, as maybe my last note for this video, um, if I haven't already, the FN1 button here is pre-programmed in your camera to be your home key. Um, you can set that up if that's a problem. If you just if you set it to anything else, you can just go into B, and then you just go down to button function, and then you would just go to FN1, and make sure that that's set for uh, home, which is its default. So um, that's what I've got, guys. That's my notes on uh, EM1 Mark II autofocus. That's working for me right now. I would love to discuss this with you guys in the comments or online. So hit me up if you've got any other notes, ideas, or thoughts on how you've configured your camera for peak performance and uh, if you shoot sports or birds in flight that kind of thing then I would love to hear your sayings for that too. You can reach me on social always at Joseph Mark Photo, J-O-S-E-P-H-M-A-R-K-P-H-O-T-O -O, or you can see me on uh, Instagram and Facebook at just uh, Joseph Mark Photo. So anyway, um, did I say that right? <laughs> I'll try that again. My website is josephmark.com and my social is josephmarkphoto. So hit the uh, subscription, uh, the bell, all that kind of good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye.